Thanks for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for the 2015 film Hell House LLC, uh, and it's a pretty independent film from what I can gather. Uh, when I'm doing this review, it is available for streaming on the Shutter streaming service, which is for horror and all that. If you don't know about Shutter, check it out. Um, I don't have any real affiliation or anything like that. I just really like it, so just saying. All right, so let's talk about Hell House LLC. Uh, I am going to give you a little bit of a disclaimer before I really start getting into it, though. Um, keep in mind when I'm doing this review, I'm not a person who really particularly likes found footage films. There are some I really do like, like I think Paranormal Activity is really good. I actually didn't really like The Blair Witch Project. I know some people hearing that are probably like, oh my gosh. But the problem with that is I didn't see The Blair Witch Project when it originally came out. I saw it many years later. So there, I had already seen other found footage films. So had I seen Blair Witch Project when it came out initially, then I probably would feel differently. But I'm not big on found footage. Um, so know that and view it through that lens as you hear me doing this review. So Hell House LLC was written and directed by Stephen Cognetti. Um, there have been two sequels as well. So I think the third one just came out kind of recently maybe this year, I think it was this year. Uh, so from what I've heard, uh, a lot of people are like, they really like the first Hell House. Uh, they, they like the second one, and I'm not hearing very good things about the third one. Some people are like, oh, I kind of liked it. So, all right, you know, you'd have to make up your own mind. And I gotta be honest, I, spoilers, spoilers as far as how I feel about the film. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna see the second or third. Although if people really want me to put a comment down there and let me know, then for the audience, I would check out the second and third. They they both are available on Shutter right now, so I could. I just, you know, found footage. Um, so this was originally released on a few video-on-demand platforms. That's how it was done. This isn't a theatrical film or anything like that. You know, it's very low budget, which, you know, a lot of found footage films are low budget. And to be honest, it's smart to do found footage style if you are a low budget operation um, or no budget really. Uh, so it's just a really easy thing to do. Well, I guess I can't say easy. Film in general is not easy. It is easier to do than trying to make it look very cinematic and theatrical and stuff like that. And it's much cheaper. So for people who are low budget or no budget, it makes sense. So I understand it. So this was originally supposed to be in a house, in an actual house, but they couldn't actually find a suitable house for what they were looking for. So in the end, they ended up going with a location in Lehighton, uh, Pennsylvania, called the Haunting at the Waldorf Hotel. So I believe it is actually a um, one of those like, uh, oh my God, why am I blanking on it right now? This is so terrible. Haunted House, like one of the haunted house uh, ordeals, which is what this whole film is centered around. It's not a spoiler that's in their, you know, little log line synopsis ordeal. Um, that it is basically something goes wrong at a haunted house attraction, you know. So it's good that they were actually shooting at a haunted house attraction. And I think it helped a lot with kind of set design because things were kind of already set up in an interesting way. And to be honest, I like the premise of this. I like the idea of doing a found footage film with a haunted attraction as the setting. Uh, it gives a lot of possibilities to it. And it, it also is, is a situation where it can really blur the lines of like what truly is something real going on versus something that's staged that's part of the attraction itself. And for that reason, I think it is a good idea because you could see in real life that becoming a problem. If there were actually a situation where something terrible really did happen at, a, and at one of these haunted attractions, that it might be hard for people to decipher at the moment that it's happening if it's real or not because you're supposed to be seeing terrible things. So if something terrible actually happens, you might be like, oh, this is all a part of the ordeal. So it works as a concept. I just didn't particularly like how it was executed. Sorry. Um, it definitely looks creepy, though. The The location they chose was very, very good. I think it really, really worked. It looked creepy. It looked like it was potentially scary. I think they did a pretty good job with kind of dressing it up and making it look like the haunted attraction that they were trying to make it look like. But also, even before they did that, how they made it look just like old, dilapidated, and unused. Um, that just kind of added to the ambiance. Um, 
So, okay, so this is where I'm going to talk about one of my issues with found footage films in general, and that's at play here. So it's not necessarily, like, their fault. It's just one of the problems I have with found footage in general, and it kind of happens with a lot of them, um, that there's a lot of time-wasting that ends up being built into this style of film. Like, you literally have to waste a lot of time because you have to have a lot of realistic dialogue be between people. You have to have kind of that uh, downtime, real life in between what's actually going on. And it, it feels like it drags a lot of the time because you have to do that in order to make it feel realistic. Because the found footage, the whole premise, obviously, is that it, it's found footage, it's real life. So you have to make it feel like it's real life. It has to be right. It has to feel right. So in order to do that, you're kind of sacrificing pacing of the film. And that's one of the things that really gets to me. I'm big on pacing with films. I really don't like it when it feels like it's just really dragging. Um, and that's kind of one of the main things that found footage does. Like, it literally will make it drag. Like, I cannot watch The Blair Witch Project. I watched it once, not super long ago, and I was just like, it just drags, 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 drags. Yes, there's a cool moment at the end, but it's like, I had to sit through how much in order to get there? I'm not doing this again. It's very historically important, but it doesn't hold up. That's my opinion. And found footage in general a lot of times does not hold up, in my opinion. So, anyway, that's my issue with found footage in general. Um, so it also ends up being a lot of heavy breathing in a lot of these films, you know, because people are running from things, and they're just like... <sighs> That's something that bothers me a lot in films when it's just like heavy breathing and people running and when there's a lot of it. Like you can you can choose to cut some of that down or a lot of that down, but ugh. it bothers me even more, by the way, when it's in films that are not found footage. And a prime example of that is the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock. That movie is terrible. First of all, it's terrible. <laughs> Second of all, I mean, it looks amazing, but as an actual film, it's terrible. But um so much heavy breathing in that, and it's not found footage. Totally inexcusable. Sorry, side tangent. Uh, the setup with this, with the text and the news coverage that they start it with, um, well, whoops, I'm, uh, sorry, messed up my notes. So the setup with the text and news coverage, like that's the first thing they start with, actually is a really good way to kind of grab your attention. It makes you really want to know more. It's kind of, it makes it more intriguing as a start instead of starting with some of the found footage stuff and just being like, um, not knowing where things are going uh, to, to kind of like have the aftermath in the beginning really piques interest. And you're just like, okay, now I'm very interested. Something terrible went down. I really need to know. So it, that kind of keeps your interest peaked, which I really, I, I like that idea. Uh, the found footage approach works for lower budget because of the POV, which doesn't have to show uh, super nice shots. And it also doesn't have to show a lot of detail. That's another big thing. So another one of these strengths for low budget with or no budget with the with, uh, found footage is that you can take props and you can take costumes that don't necessarily look that good and put them in there and make them look good because you can just not show them for a lot of time or the lighting's bad and it's believable because it's a real life situation and the lighting's not always going to be good and it's you know the shots aren't really going to be framed per se so found footage works quite well for that and i think they did a pretty good job when they put things in there of of making that work to their advantage so they pulled it off in that respect uh, this does remind me a little bit of a movie I watched not long ago, long ago called The Funhouse Massacre, uh, which actually came out the same year. It was also a 2015 film, so nobody copied the other because they came out at the same time, but uh, it was the same type of thing. It's like this question of what happens when people go into a haunted house attraction and they think everything is staged and it's not necessarily staged. That one's fun. I like that it's not a great film, but it's a fun film. I would recommend that, The Funhouse Massacre. Um, and if you've seen it, put a comment down there. Let me know your thoughts, because I know there are probably some people who are like, Pfft, and some people are like, yeah. Uh, the concept makes sense, because in a haunted house, you'd be confused as to what's fake and real. I already covered that, sorry. Um, okay, here, here's, a, here's something I thought about that I'm not sure a lot of people think about when they're watching this movie. People know what an LLC is. 
Like, people know Hell House LLC. Like, they know an LLC means it's like a company. But thinking about what it actually means spelled out, limited liability company is important to kind of give you in the title an idea that something's going to go wrong. It's kind of a foreshadowing uh, of a sort. Um, so think about that. Limited liability company. It kind of says, hey, we're not liable for terrible things going down. And that's what happens, obviously. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a movie. <laughs> uh, the dialogue actually seems pretty realistic in this. Now, I don't know if they went ahead and scripted a lot of the dialogue or all the dialogue or if they just went with a lot of improv. Uh, I know with some of the found footage films, they'll, they'll kind of let people do a lot of improv if they really trust the actors. I know Blair Witch actually was that way. There was a ton of improv involved. And it's good and it's bad because the, improv the improvisation can make the dialogue even more meandering, but it also makes it seem more um, realistic and it has a better flow to it as far as like real life conversation. So there's kind of like a good and a bad. Um, it just gets like super, super drawn out, I feel like, when it's not scripted. So, you know, it's a give or take. Like, you, you got to figure out for your film, if you're doing found footage, like, what do you want? Do you want it to move better or do you want it to be more realistic? So it's kind of a balancing act, in my opinion. But I don't know what they did for this film. But I felt like the dialogue felt pretty realistic. But like I also said, it felt like it was very long and drawn out and just pacing suffered a lot. So I don't understand how they shot some of their interview portions, which by the way, the overwhelming majority of the film was shot at that location in Pennsylvania. I was talking about, but the interviews, almost all the interviews were actually shot in New York. And I don't understand why they chose to shoot some of the interviews the way they did, because a bunch, a bunch of the interview portions look good. Like they look normal. Like they're just showing a person kind of like from here up and they're talking to the camera. But then they have these shots where they, they go way in on the person's face. Well, actually, like, I'll see if I can, like, it'll be like, an like, sorry if that gets, like, super loud, but like that. You know, like, where, they, where they're cutting the top of the person's head off, sometimes cutting the top and, and, like, a portion of the bottom of the head off. You're just, like, so close in on the face. And I don't know when people started doing this because I see it from time to time now. And stylistically, I think it looks terrible. Whenever I see that, it makes me, like, subconsciously like move my head back because it's like dude you're too close move back come on like it's not a good idea i don't i don't know why we're doing this anymore so it's a small thing in this film because there's not like a ton of those interview portions but um it's just something that irks me when people do it and i just don't understand why you would it, it doesn't make sense um there's something in this film that is ripped basically straight out of the Blair Witch Project. It, and it's not in the end or anything like that. So, it, 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 But if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen the film and you're going to see the film, you will know what I'm talking about, kind of. It's, it's something that's ripped straight from it, but the context isn't exactly the same. So just think about that, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, there are hints about the origin of of what's actually going on within this film, within the dialogue. And I like that aspect about it. I like that they're, they don't kind of be like, that they're not just like, here's the origin of what's happening. It's all explained in some text on the screen or in a news interview or coverage or whatever, that you have to piece it together a little bit through the dialogue, which makes sure you really have to pay attention to what people are saying, which... With a film like this, like I was saying, how it, like a lot of it can be improvised. It's kind of like, you know, just small chit chat. People can tend to like not pay attention or just like gloss over it. But in this case, you have to pay attention because then you get those little tidbits. You can kind of put that together. And I like that about this. And I think it's nice that, you know, I can piece together the backstory on what's actually happening or like why what why it's happening. So, so overall, I felt like. I understand why people like this if you're into found footage films, but for me, I was kind of eh about the movie, and like I said, I don't have a desire to see the second one or the third one, but I would if people really want me to review them, so let me know in the comments. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think they did a good job for being low to no budget. It's fine. So, 
all those things considered with my five star scale with half stars in play, I'm going to put it at a two and a half. For me personally, I want to put it at a two, but I feel like I should give it a two and a half to make it right in the middle because of my distaste for the found footage style in general. Just saying. So anyway, um, I do appreciate everyone checking this one out. Uh, we'll have to see what I end up reviewing next. Please hit that subscribe. That's the way you can repay me. I don't make money on this. This is just something I'm doing for fun. But I want to get it out there to the masses. And um, I want to have some chats with people about horror in general. Because I'm a horror nerd. I don't get to talk about a lot of people. Or ugh, I don't get to talk about a lot of horror with people around where I live. Because I don't know that many people who are super into it. So that's why that's part of why I'm doing these videos. Because I want to get some conversations going. So let's talk. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about other stuff. Please hit that subscribe, though, because that's your, the way you can repay me. It takes you like a second and totally painless. But thanks for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.